In this video, we'll look at how we can identify gases. And the five gases that we'll be testing today are hydrogen, uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, chlorine, and ammonia. So let's first take a look at hydrogen. The test for hydrogen is to use a lighted splint. Hydrogen is highly combustible in oxygen. It uh, reacts violently with oxygen to form water. So we'll take a lighted splint. And that will give us a squeaky pop sound if we put it to the top of the test tube. And we might even get some condensation on the test tube. So let me just draw that real quick. You have your reaction taking place here. And you're going to take a splint, um, which is lighted. And that will give us a pop sound with perhaps some condensation on the edge of the test tube. So what's happening here is that the hydrogen gas is reacting with oxygen in the air, right? Because the fire provides the energy to combine the hydrogen gas being liberated from our reaction here to combine with oxygen to form water, hence the condensation here. And this reaction releases some energy, which is what gives us that pop sound. The next test is for oxygen. Uh, most things will combust uh, more readily in pure oxygen than they do in just the 21% of oxygen that we see in the atmosphere. So you take your test tube here with your reaction, and if oxygen gas is indeed released, what we'll do is um, you will take a splint and this time you're going to take a glowing splint uh, instead of a lighted splint. So you take a glowing splint here, it will burst into flames and um, that indicates the presence of oxygen. So the reaction taking place here is that the carbon in the wood of the splint reacts with the oxygen gas that was liberated from here and it wouldn't normally burst into flames in the 21% of oxygen in the air but because you have pretty much 100% oxygen coming out here they will react to form carbon dioxide gas hence um, giving you those flames. The next gas we are taking a look at is carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is a weakly acidic gas and what it will do is it will turn lime water milky white so you will take your test test tube where the reaction is taking place and if some carbon dioxide is being released we will take that carbon dioxide and channel it into a test tube filled with lime water so we have some lime water in this test tube and lime water is calcium hydroxide aqueous so what we'll see is that it we get a milky white precipitate if carbon dioxide was present so the reaction taking place here is that the carbon dioxide gas is reacting with the lime water to form an insoluble precipitate of calcium carbonate. So you have calcium carbonate precipitate formed with some water. Now it's um, important not to overdo this test and the reason is because if you add excess CO2 what happens is that the excess carbon dioxide will actually react again with that white precipitate to give me calcium bicarbonate. 
um, and that's a clear color solution. So, you know, if you do it too quickly, you might not see the precipitate form um, at all. The next gas we'll test for is chlorine. And chlorine is slightly acidic and it's a strong oxidizing agent. So we can use that, um, those two properties to test for um, chlorine. It's a green poisonous gas, so you might see a greenish tinge to it, which might clue you into the fact that it's chlorine. So because it's acidic, what it will do is it will turn damp litmus red. So it's going to take some, if you take some blue litmus paper, it's going to turn red. If you just place it at the top of the test tube right there. So let me just draw a test tube with the reaction going on here. And if you have some blue litmus paper, the tip of it is just going to turn red because of the chlorine gas being released there. And because it's oxidizing, the litmus paper will subsequently get bleached. So what you'll see is it's going to turn red and then it'll turn white because it got bleached um, in excess chlorine. And the final gas that we'll be testing for is ammonia. Ammonia is a slightly alkylic gas. Um, so what we'll see is it's going to turn your uh, blue lit uh, red litmus, I beg your pardon, it's going to turn your red litmus blue. So if you have <clears throat> ammonia liberated here and if you put some red litmus paper at the top of the test tube it's gonna turn blue so red litmus turns blue another test you can do is to release a little bit of concentrated um, hydrochloric acid fumes and if you do that, you react with the hydrochloric acid to give you this white cloud of um, ammonium chloride crystals. So those are two tests that you can do to confirm the presence of ammonia. So that was um, testing for gases and that concludes our series on the test for gases, cations and anions. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe for more updates and leave a comment below with any questions that you have. I'll be sure to look at them and answer them.